the Digital Services Act, the revolution will be televised. The Digital Services Act is upon us. And with its bestie, the Digital Markets Act, it promises to force powerful changes in the digital ecosystem currently in place in the European Union and even globally. The power is shifting back to the people with the Digital Services Act and intermediary service providers better listen to its complaints about unclear and deceptive terms and conditions. It's take down notices for illegal content products and services, as well as its concerns, the people's concerns, about bullying, breach of free speech, unfair targeting of minors, minorities, etc. Otherwise, the European Commission and National Digital Services Coordinators in the 27 European Union member states will take swift action to force online platforms, other types of intermediary service providers, and search engines to change their way and comply with fines which can go up to 6% of worldwide annual turnover. Be warned the Google, Apple, Microsoft, and X Twitter of this world. The revolution will be, is televised. So what is the Digital Services Act? Regulation 2022-2065 of the European Parliament of October 2022 on a single market for digital services. The Digital Services Act, DSA, is a regulation from the EU that regulates online intermediaries and platforms such as marketplaces, social networks, content sharing platforms, app stores, and online travel and accommodation platforms. The DSA Digital Services Act is part of a package of new EU rules focused on achieving Europe's digital targets for 2030 and the digital ecosystem called Shaping Europe's Digital Future, along with the Digital Markets Act, the Past AI Act, as well as the Data Act and the Data Governance Act, which form a single set of rules that apply across the EU to implement the two following goals. Firstly, create a safer digital space in which the fundamental rights of all users of digital services are protected by setting clear and proportionate rules. And secondly, establish a level playing field to foster innovation, growth and competitiveness both in the European single market and globally. More specifically, the DSI creates an EU-wide uniform framework dealing with four issues. Firstly, the handling of illegal or potentially harmful online content. Secondly, the liability of online intermediaries for third-party content. Thirdly, the protection of users' fundamental rights online. And fourthly, the bridging of information asymmetries between online intermediaries and their users. So who is affected and or impacted by the Digital Services Act? Well, it's the providers of online intermediary services who are going to bear the brunt of these rules. What are intermediary services? The DSA applies to all intermediary services offered to EU users both natural persons and legal entities, irrespective of where the providers of those intermediary services have a pl place of establishment. So if these providers of intermediary services are based outside the EU, just by the fact that they provide services, intermediary services to EU citizens, then they will have to comply with the Digital Services Act. Intermediary services are defined as a mere conduit service, mere conduit service, consisting of the transmission in a communication network of information provided by a recipient of the service, or the provision of access to a communication network. For example, mere conduit services include generic categories of services, just internet exchange points, wireless access points virtual private networks, DNS services and resolvers, top-level domain name registries, 
registrars, certificate authorities that issue digital certificates, voice, voice over IP and other interpersonal communication services. Our intermediary services also comprise caching services consisting of a transmission in a communication network of information provided by a recipient of a service involving the automatic, intermediary and temporary storage of that information performed for the sole purpose of making the information on the words transmission to other recipients more efficient upon their request. So for example, caching services include the sole provision of content delivery networks, reverse proxies, or content adaptation proxies. And intermediary services also cover hosting services, which consist in the storage of information provided by and at the request of a recipient of a service. So for example, cloud computing, web hosting, paid referencing services, or services enabling sharing information and content online, including file storage and sharing. Intermediary services may be provided in isolation as part of another type of intermediary service or simultaneously with other intermediary services. Whether a specific service constitutes a mere conduit, caching or hosting services depends solely on its technical functionalities, which might evolve in time and should be assessed on a case-by-case -case basis. So what are these providers of intermediary services? All companies, as I mentioned before, all companies providing online intermediary services on the EU single market, whether established in the EU or not, must comply with the Digital Services Act. These companies include intermediary service providers offering network infrastructure, such as internet access providers, caching operators, also hosting service providers, online platforms, including social media platforms, social networks, app stores, online travels and accommodation websites, content sharing websites, collaborative economy platforms and marketplaces. Search engines as well are uh, included in the definition of providers of intermediary services. In the DSA, companies are subject to obligations which are proportionate to their size, role, impact and audiences in the online ecosystem. In particular, micro companies and small businesses with less than 50 employees and annual sales of less than 10 million euros are exempt from some of the DSA's obligations. And platforms and search engines defined as having, I quote here, a number of average monthly active recipients of a service in the EU equal to or higher than 45 million, which is around 10% of the EU population, which is at 450 million people. So these platform and search engine are subject to enhanced obligations because they have 45 million active users per uh, month. This highest tier of intermediary service providers, which has the heaviest compliance obligations, comprises very large online platforms, very large online platforms, abbreviated to VLOPs, horrible uh, name for me, and very large online search engines, abbreviated to BLOSS, B-L-O-S-E. <sighs> well. So what are these very large online platforms and very large online search engines, VLOPS and VLOMS? The European Commission has begun to designate very large online platforms and very large online search engines based on user numbers provided by platforms and search engines, which regardless of size, except for micro and small enterprises, they were required to publish by the 17th of February 2023. Platforms and search engines will need to update these figures at least every six months. Once the Commission designates a platform as a very large online platform or a search engine as a very large search engine, the designated online service has four months to comply with the DSA. The designation triggers specific rules that tackle the particular risks such large services pose to Europeans and society when it comes to illegal content and their impact on fundamental rights, public security and well-being. For example, 
the very large online platform or very large online search engine needs to establish a point of contact for authorities and users, report criminal offenses, have user-friendly terms and conditions, and be transparent as regards advertising, recommender systems, or content moderation. The Commission will revoke its decision if the platform or search engine does not reach the threshold of 45 million monthly users anymore during one full year. So who are those very large online platforms and very large online search engines identified by the Commission as early as April 2023 so far? So some of the most notable are Interalia, Alibaba, Netherlands, BD, which is a very large on online platform, and the DSA for the designated service AliExpress. There's also Amazon Services Europe, SIRL, which is a very large online platform, of course, under the DSA, for the designated service Amazon Store. Apple Distribution International Limited, Irish company, is a very large online platform under the DSA for the designated service App Store. ILO Free Site Limited is a, so UK company, is a very large online platform and the DSA for the designated service Pornhub. It's been added this year, Pornhub, as a uh, very large online platform. Who knew that Pornhub had more than 45 million users in the EU? Naughty people. Booking.com BV is a very large online platform and the DSA for the designated service Booking.com. Google Ireland Limited is a very large online search engine under the DSA for the designated service Google Search and a very large online platform under the DSA for the designated services Google Play, Google Maps, Google Shopping and YouTube. LinkedIn Island Limited Company is a very large online platform under the DSA for the designated service LinkedIn. Okay, I could go on like this forever. But I'm not because I, uh, I'm bored out of my mind. But you have a list of all these vlogs and vlogs on our content, which is available on our publication sections on crefabi.com and crefabi.fr. So do not hesitate to purchase a membership and then you will be able to see our restricted content from there. On the 19th of December 2023, the Commission opened formal proceedings to assess whether X slash Twitter, which is also um, designated as a very large online platform. So to assess whether X may have breached the Digital Services Act in areas linked to risk management, content moderation, dark patterns, advertising transparency and data access for researchers. This decision to open proceedings was motivated by the analysis of the risk assessment report submitted by X slash Twitter in September 2023 to the Commission. X transparency report published on the 3rd of November 2023 and X replies to a formal request for information which among others concerned the dissemination of illegal content in the context of Hamas terrorist attacks against Israel. So, what are the obligations that providers of online intermediary services have under the DSA, the Digital Services Act? The DSA establishes a new liability framework for companies in the digital sector, meaning they are now subject to a multitude of obligations. So what are these key obligations for all, all intermediary service providers? So let's give you like some examples, okay? I, I like a summary of the key obligations imposed on different levels of digital intermediary service providers by the DSA. The first one is governance. All providers at all levels must establish two single points of contact, one for direct communication with supervisory authorities and the other for the recipients of the services. Providers not established in the EU but offering services in the EU will be required to designate a legal representative in the EU. Online platforms will need to have an out-of-court alternative dispute resolution mechanism, publish annual reports on content moderation, including the number of orders received from the authorities and the number of notices received from other authorities for removal and disabling of illegal content or content contrary to their terms and conditions and the effect given to such orders and notices. Very large online platforms and very large online search engines must perform systematic risk assessments 
share data with regulators and appoint a compliance officer months later. Another key obligation for all intermediary service providers relates to responsible online marketplaces. Online platforms will have to strengthen checks on the information provided by traders and make efforts to prevent illegal content so that consumers can purchase safe products and services. Measures also to counter illegal content online, including illegal goods and services. So the DSA imposes new mechanisms allowing users to flag illegal content online and for platforms to cooperate with specialized trusted flaggers, so people flag, trusted flaggers, to identify and remove illegal content. There are also some new rules to trace sellers on online marketplaces to help build trust and go after scammers more easily. A new obligation for online marketplaces to randomly check against existing databases whether products or services on base sites are compliant. Sustainable efforts to enhance the traceability of products through advanced technological solutions. There's also a ban on dark patterns on the interface of online platforms, referring to misleading tricks that manipulate users into choices they do not intend to make. Providers must not manipulate users, commonly known as nudging, into using those services. For example, by making one choice more prominent than the other. Cancelling a subscription to a service should also be as easy as subscribing. There's also going to be an increased wide-ranging transparency for online platforms, including better information on terms and conditions, as well as transparency on the algorithms used for recommending content or products to users. Also, there's going to be an enhanced transparency for all advertising on online platforms and influences commercial communications. Also, some bans on targeted advertising will be imposed on online platforms. So targeted advertising to minors or targeted advertising based on special categories of personal data, such as ethnicity, political views or sexual orientation is prohibited for online platforms and very large online platforms, of course. There's also a protection of minors on any platform in the EU for services aimed at minors. The providers of intermediary services must provide an explanation on the conditions and restrictions of use in a way that is understandable to minors. Also going to be a recommender system, recommender for recommending. So very large online platforms will be required to offer users a system for recommending content not based on profiling. Transparency requirements for the parameters of recommended systems will be included. There's going to this also now a notice and action procedure in place with the DSA, which, whereby providers of intermediary services must explicitly describe in their terms and conditions any restrictions that they may impose on the use of their services, such as the content moderation policies, and to act responsibly in applying and enforcing those restrictions. Users will be empowered to give notice of illegal online content. Online platforms will have to be reactive through a clearer notice and action procedure. Victims of cybercrime will see the content that they report removed momentarily. There's also a protection of fundamental rights. Stronger safeguards must be put in place to ensure user notices are processed in a non-arbitrary and non-discriminatory way and safeguards must protect fundamental rights, such as data protection and freedom of expression. So there will also be, thanks to this DSA, some effective safeguards for users, including the possibility to challenge platforms' content moderation decisions based on the obligatory information platforms must now provide to users when their content gets removed or restricted. Users have new rights including a right to complain to the platform, seek out-of-court settlements, complain to their national authority in their own language, or seek compensation for breaches of the rules. Now, representative organizations are able to defend user rights for large-scale breaches of the law. I mean, this sounds so too good to be true. I, I really wonder whether all these platforms are ever going to do all this. I mean, there's such room for improvement between what we have now where basically 
the people who use these platforms are treated like cattle. And what this the Digital Service Act plans and, and, and provides for, I, I just, it, it is just such a noise gap. I, I, I do believe that um, it will be difficult to enforce the DSA the more I read about it. Anyway, there's also some enhanced accountability with the Digital Services Act. EU member states and the Commission will be able to access the algorithms of very large online platforms and very large online search engines. And there will be access to the data to the researchers of key platforms in order to scrutinize how platforms work and how online risks evolve. Also, a new crisis response mechanism needs to be put in place with the DSA in cases a serious threat for public health and security crisis, such as pandemic or a war, arise. There's going to be also a unique oversight structure. The Commission is the primary regulator of very large online platforms and very large online search engines, while other intermediary service providers are under the supervision of member states where they are established. Indeed, national digital services coordinators, DSTs, digital service coordinators, designed by each one of the 27 EU member states, are responsible for supervising, enforcing, and monitoring the DSA in that country. In France, for example, the Autorité de Régulation de la Communication Audiovisuelle et Numérique, ARCOM, is the DSC. The Commission has enforcement powers similar to those it has under antitrust proceedings. An EU-wide cooperation mechanism is currently being established between national regulators, the DSCs, and the Commission. So while the Digital Services Act does not define what illegal content online is, it sets out EU-wide rules that cover detection, flagging, and removal of illegal content, as well as new risk assessment framework for very large online platforms and very large online so changes on how illegal content spreads on their services. What constitutes illegal content, though, is defined in other laws, either at EU level or at national level. For example, terrorist content or child uh, sexual abuse material or illegal hate speech is defined at EU level. Where a content is illegal only in a given EU member state, as a general rule, it should only be removed in the territory where it is illegal. The DSA stipulates that all breaches must be subject to proportionate and dissuasive penalties determined by each member state. Intermediary service providers can be fined up to 6% of annual worldwide turnover for breaching the DSA and up to 1% of worldwide turnover for providing incorrect or misleading information. Now we've looked at all the key obligations for all uh, intermediary service providers. Let's have a look at the key obligations which are specific to the very large online platforms, poetically called VLOPs, and very large online search engines, which are called VLOs. So once they are designated as such, very large online platforms and very large online search engines must follow the rules that focus only on VLOPs and VLOs due to the potential impact they can have on society. This means that they must identify, analyze, and assess systemic risks that are linked to their services. They should look in particular to risks related to illegal content, fundamental rights such as freedom of expression, media freedom and pluralism, discrimination, consumer protection, and children's rights, public security and electoral processes, and gender-based violence, public health, protection of minors and mental and physical well-being. Once the risks are identified and reported to the Commission for oversight, very large online platforms and very large online search engines are obliged to put measures in place that mitigate these risks. This could mean adapting the design or functioning of their services or changing their recommender systems. This could also consist of reinforcing the platform internally with more resources to better identify systematic risks. Those designated as very large online platforms and very large online search engines also have to establish an internal 
compliance function that ensures that the risks identified are mitigated. Be audited by an independent auditor at least once a year and adopt measures that respond to the auditor's recommendations. Share their data with the Commission and national authorities so that they can monitor and assess compliance with the DSA. Allow vetted researchers to access platform data when the research contributes to the detection, identification, and understanding of systemic risks in the EU. Provide an option in their recommended systems that is not based on user profiling and have a publicly available repository of advertisements. To conclude, the Digital Services Act is a first of a kind regulatory toolbox globally and sets an international benchmark for a regulatory approach to online intermediaries. Designed as a single uniform set of rules for the EU, these rules will give users new protections and businesses legal certainty across the whole single market. Moreover, the Digital Services Act will complement the distance selling regulations and EU consumer contract legislation well, empowering consumers and businesses in doing more business and deals online. While we are super glad, us at Preferby, to be Europeans and therefore to benefit from those wonderful protections, we highly recommend that providers of intermediary services take the Digital Services Act very seriously and work their socks off to become immediately compliant with it, even when online platforms such as EasyJet, for example, have not yet been designated as very large online platforms by the Commission. That's it from us at Crefervy today. Happy Easter! And see you next time.